Let me begin by just saying you all dress up pretty nice. I hope everybody is having, having a wonderful time. Uh, now, those of you who are in uniform, you look outstanding. Your dates do look better, though. I just want to point this out. Now, I'm not going to give a long speech. Uh, what uh, I really want to do is, is come down and express the extraordinary gratitude not just of me as your Commander-in-Chief, but more importantly, the thanks of all the American people. I want to start by thanking some of our outstanding leaders who are here. Uh, our hosts, our senior enlisted advisors from all five branches of our military. The Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Marty Dempsey, who promised, who, who promised to sing sometime tonight, so you should hold him to it. The Vice Chairman, Sandy Winifield, uh, and all our outstanding members of the Joint Chiefs. Our Secretary of Veterans Affairs and Vietnam veteran, Rick Shinseki, who is here. And we're honored to be joined by some truly extraordinary Americans, our wounded warriors who inspire us with their incredible strength and resolve. Our enlisted men and women and junior officers, the backbone of our military. Our amazing military families. including the families of the fallen, our Gold Star families, we will stand with you always. The members of the legendary Tuskegee Airmen in the House, and the recipients of our nation's highest military decoration, the Medal of Honor, we are honored by your presence. You know, today, we experience the majesty of our democracy, a ritual only possible in a form of government that is of and by and for the people, a day made possible because there are patriots like each and every one of you who defend our freedom every single day. So this little party is just another way to say something we can never say enough. Thank you. Thank you for volunteering. Thank you for stepping up. Thank you for keeping us strong. Thank you for always making us proud. I have no greater honor than being your Commander-in-Chief. It's because of you that with honor, we were able to end the war in Iraq. Because of you that we delivered justice to Osama bin Laden. Because of you that it's even possible to give Afghans a chance to determine their own destiny. We are going forward, and we'll keep our military the fighting, finest fighting force that the world has ever known. Now, tonight we're also joined by some of our service members in Afghanistan. They can't see us, but we can see them on this monitor. Who we got there? General, are you there? Abe? General, are you there? Abe? Sir, good evening, Mr. President. Congratulations on your inauguration. It is Major General Abrams, Commanding General, 3rd Infantry Division, and Regional Command South. We're honored to be able to join you there this evening. Sir, I'm joined tonight by some fantastic airmen and non-commissioned officers and soldiers serving here in Kandahar. Congratulations, Mr. President. So our first class, Orlando Jackson, Lake Charles, Louisiana, 3rd Infantry Division, Falcon Brigade, Task Force Light Horse. Uh, I just want to congratulate you on the job well done. 
Mr. President, Master Sergeant Robert Skronsky, Superintendent, 807th Expeditionary Air Support Operations Squadron, hailing from Detroit, Michigan. I want to say go Tigers. Good evening, Mr. President. My name is Sergeant First Class David Wood. I'm out of Monument, Colorado, uh, 3rd Infantry Division, Falcon Brigade, Task Force Light Horse. Thank you very much for having us here at your party. Congratulations. Good evening, Mr. President. Master Sergeant James Galuski. I'm the Operations Superintendent, the 807th Expeditionary Air Support Operations Squadron, and the world's greatest Air Force. I want to say congratulations on tonight, and you guys have a blessed evening. Mr. President, we're honored to be able to join you tonight, and we've got one more thing for all of you there. Rock of the morn! <laughs> well, listen, uh, to all of you who are there, we know it's tough being away from your families. Uh, we know the incredible sacrifices uh, and challenges that you meet every single day. But uh, I can tell you that you've got a room full of patriots here. And, uh, and, and although I've got to admit that they're uh, a little spiffied up right now, uh, their heart and soul, uh, their dedication, their sense of duty uh, is at one with every single one of the folks who are in Kandahar right now. Uh, and I want you to know that you know, when I was standing uh, on the steps of the Capitol today, looking out over close to a million people, the single biggest cheer that I always get, and today was no different at my inauguration, was when I spoke about the extraordinary men and women in uniform that preserve our freedom and keep our country strong. So. to know that every single day we are thinking of you. We're going to make sure that you've got the equipment, the strategy, uh, the mission that allows you to succeed and keep our country safe. Know that we are going to be looking after and thinking about your families every single day and that when you get back home, uh, you're going to be greeted by a grateful nation uh, and that you will be on our minds tonight uh, and every single night until our mission in Afghanistan is completed. Can everybody please give our comrades in arms a huge round of applause? And please, all of you, give uh, our very best to your families back home uh, because I know it's just as tough, if not tougher, for them uh, to, to see you uh, in harm's way and, and, and away from the family. God bless you. God bless the United States of America. <laughs>